Hi, welcome everyone again. It's a pleasure and a great privilege to be with you. I am Cecilia Tornaghi, the Managing Editor of America's Quarterly, the Council of the Americas and American Society magazine. In our last edition, we knew we wanted to look at the Amazon region, always keeping in mind these record deforestation uh, and the fact that climate change means that the world's eyes are in Brazil. And these eyes are a lot, are looking at these problems, record deforestation. This is news that everyone is listening to and seeing. So I wanted to do something a little bit different to see what's happening in the Amazon region and to see what are the possibilities for conservation and sustainable development. What projects exist on the ground in the region that could open spaces to make it viable to have a standing forest? And looking at this through the lens of a standing forest, that was our proposal in this edition. So we discussed many different projects in this edition, and we learned so much. And today we want to precisely to speak to the local governments, the regional governments. Right now, Brazil has a vision which doesn't benefit the forest or the people who live in the forest. These clearly are not priorities for the current administration. So, what are the what is the role of the subnational governments? So, as we say in English, it's where the rubber hits the road. Those uh, municipal and state governments, and how are they acting? So, it's a great pleasure to introduce this fantastic panel. And it's a real privilege to be here with you. Let's introduce first Governor Flavio Gino, the governor of Maranhão, the a state in the Amazon region, the Brazilian Amazon region, which he presides the consortium of governors in the Amazon region, which makes up all states in the Brazilian Amazon region. Just as an aside, we know that the Amazon goes beyond Brazil, but Brazil, the 60% of the forest is in Brazil. That's why it's so important what the work you're doing. Tatiana Shore is the Secretary of Science, Technology, and Innovation, and also a professor at the University of Amazonas, and Edmilson Rodriguez, the mayor of the city of Belém, the largest capital city in the Amazon, Brazilian Amazon region, an urban center. Many people forget that uh, the majority of population in the Amazons live in urban regions. It's a great pleasure. Thank you so much for your participation. Anyone who wants to ask questions, please use our chat room. <clears throat> we will try to monitor that as much as possible. So I wanted to start with the governor, Flavio Gino, and to speak a little bit about your consortium of governors. Can you tell us a little bit about how the consortium is working? And it didn't happen, it didn't occur today. This started in the form of governors in 2017. Talk a little bit about the consortium and projects that you've done. I know you've had uh, direct contacts with the U.S. president. You wrote a letter to President Biden. So what is your uh, vision and how do you see the role of the states in conserving the forest? I want to thank you and the whole team of America's Quarterly and <clears throat> Mayor Rodriguez, Secretary Shore, and everyone who is listening. The consortium was founded after the forum of the legal Amazon region. This is nine Brazilian states that make up the consortium that are uh, in the Amazon. And we are dealing with socioeconomic issues and also strategical issues with respect to the environment, we, each state has actions to combat deforestation and the illegal fires. 
And this is part of a system that is, should be presided by the federal government since many of these criminal activities legally are, should be monitored by the federal government by, because, often because they're indigenous lands, they're border areas. So the states typically are complementary. And uh, I wanted to highlight, Cecilia, the coordination on a regional level. In other words, not federal nor individually by state. Over the next two weeks, we will release our green recovery plan, which is sort of a regional green deal that we are working on with a methodology and a portfolio of projects, understanding that monitoring inspections are important, federal activity is important, but economic stimuli and to, for sustainable practices are very important. So once we have illegal deforestation, illegal fires, which are crimes, we also have legal deforestation that are done within the law, but also need to be monitored so that we can guarantee income for the population so that we can try to de-stimulate uh, or, or to discourage the uh, <clears throat> deforestation. There was recently an article that said that Amazon should be seen as an opportunity, not as a problem. So the lack of coordination on the federal level we see is often, uh, is often uh, not working uh, in your favor, but there's also a very, uh, there's a focus locally in surviving. A lot of the population is working on subsistence level. So the, the consortium, uh, each state has very different realities. So how can you be this bridge between a promising future of a wealthy Amazon region and the reality of the day to day? Cecilia, creating an agenda saying, and we have to say that this is central to our debate. We can't have an environmental agenda that's completely removed from reality, the day-to-day -day reality of the people. And the stronger our actions will be when it's closer to the reality of the people. And we should try to drive the rights of these populations. So we want to we have international commitments, uh, federal commitments, state commitments. We want to transform these commitments, not in obstacles, but rather a platform for opportunities for the local populations. And for that, we need to leverage financial resources. And this portfolio of projects that I spoke of is 1.5 billion reais, sustainable projects, projects which will strengthen the green economy, because that is the main, our main thesis. Sustainability cannot be disassociated from the social, you can't disassociate the social from the environmental. They're both interconnected. Tatiana, your secretariat it deals with this direct relationship between economic development, science and technology, and you try to think of innovative ways to develop the area. And so uh, when we think about the day to day, how talk a little bit about how do you coordinate your vision of development, science and technology to try to create uh, sustainable development and how do you coordinate that with the municipalities, with the local governments? Thank you, Cecilia. It's a great pleasure and honor to be with uh, the, the mayor and the governor. I think the first thing that we need to do is to recognize how much we already have 
an international science and technology system inserted in the Amazon region. There's great ignorance about what is already produced, the science and technology that's already produced, where our professors are working. So many are in the state of Amazonas, in the state of Pará, there are large universities there, there are state universities, federal universities in the region. So we have a significant number of young doctors, highly trained, who are the spearhead to, for this technological transfer. They're in the field. So the science in the Amazon has to have a social commitment. And on the border of Peru and Colombia, there are two towns, Ibachinga and two other towns, where there are three research institutions, the federal uh, and state Amazonas. Uh, there are 50 doctors working there, 128 uh, uh, students with master's degrees. Nobody left when the pandemic occurred. They stayed there. They coordinated with the mayors how to contain the virus. Uh, they had efforts with neighboring communities. So science already has this aspect in the region, but we need to strengthen it. We need to create mechanisms for financing research in the region and to strengthen the relationship between research and so the society. So we first have to see what already exists, how we can strengthen what exists so that the Green Deal that the uh, governor has proposed can have a long-range resonance. So these youngs that I mentioned, these doctors, are the spearhead for the economic development of the region and to train new researchers and scientists. Yes, coordinating all the research in the region. Everything that we read and see, so many interesting research, incredible research that often go abroad are disseminated abroad. So I'd like to speak to the mayor now, Mayor Rodriguez. Thank you so much for your presence. It's so important because the great major to remember that the majority of people in the Amazons live in urban areas. Many people think it's such a majestic forest, but they forget that the majority of the people there live in urban centers and that the opportunities for sustainable development affect the migration and development of those regions. So as far as the New Green Deal is concerned, what do you hope for the urban centers? And what do the urban centers in a city like Berlin do to become a green city? Cecilia, first of all, thank you so much for this invitation. This is an opportunity to have a dialogue with you, with Tatiana, and to try to reaffirm the importance of science, and a science that's really rooted in reality. Amazon, the Amazon region is a great lab, a great laboratory, and we have to answer concrete problems in the region. So congratulations for organizing this event, and it's a pleasure also to be here with the governor, a governor who I believe is the best governor in Brazil. Without a doubt, the transformations that we are seeing while Brazil undergoes profound crises, the reduction of transfers from the federal government, uh, in spite of that, Maran the state of Maranhão, in spite of this electoral corruption and federal uh, problems, Maranhão is, being sh is showing that it is a state where the people actually express their local sovereignty and that the government respects that voice. So there, we're seeing in the state there is a government that is working on questions of education, health, based on science, they're responding to COVID. So I want to first thank you this opportunity. And one element that's almost always forgotten to answer your question is the, we always speak of biodiversity, but we also forget that there's diversity in the cities. 
the urban areas are ecosystems also. And they, there's a reality there, just to give you an idea. Nowadays, many people are leaving Brazil to try to look for a better life in Portugal. Portugal has 10 million inhabitants. Just Belém and Manaus have almost five and a half million. So the Amazon region is urban. There are more than tw than the Brazilian Amazon. If we, if we include the nine countries of the international Amazon region, there is a vast population. It would be one of the largest countries in the world if they joined as a country. So if the military regime, if this doctrine of safety and development That, that, that prevailed during the dictatorship with the generals and who created this authoritarian model and wanting to include the Amazon in the capitalist system, this thesis can only, only happen because they, with, with, with very, very uh, devastating results, that, the, this, the military's attempt to develop the Amazon only happened with devastating results because they thought it was a land of no men, that nobody lived there. So if we realize that there are people living there, we must respect them. And there can be no future for the Amazon region without thinking of social justice involving the rights of the people of the Amazon region. They're not homogenous. The Amazon region, the, the, the largest, it has the largest socioeconomic variety. Uh, there are over 350 ethnic groups, indigenous groups, many ethnic groups, many different languages in the region. The vast majority of the indigenous languages are in the Amazon region. So we are an example of social and environmental biodiversity or diversity. So I agree with Governor Rodriguez and Tatiana. Any projects for the Amazon has to have based on a new vision of civilization, a new vision of science and technology, and a new development standard that isn't based on huge devastating projects that, that devastate the forest and increase inequality. The inequality is already profound, and many of these projects just deepen the inequality. So the Amazon region should be a paradise. It should be a great refuge for humanity, but it's a place where often there is a perverse and systematic uh, a action so we must respect the people, that we must have a democracy where citizens have opportunities. So the Amazon state, which is the largest in the region, can only advance on these three levels only if we respect the importance of the human beings living there, both in urban regions and non-urban regions, not only the uh, traditional indigenous societies, but also the professors, the working people in the region. And it's a reality that's different from what many see, but the present makes these opportunities possible. So I'm optimistic. Cecilia, I wanna wrap up saying that if we were not a federation, even with uh, the, the fragility of our democracy and if we were not a federation, if there were not a recognition of the autonomy of the municipalities, we wouldn't be speaking of consortiums of states and municipalities. And we would be seeing a dissemination of people that hadn't been seen ever in the history of humanity. So thank we have you, thankfully, and the front line. 
I wanted to go back to the question of social justice. There is the Quilombo communities and the black communities living in the region who often are significant populations in the region. So I wanted to go before that, I wanted to ask the governor, with all these different realities that the, that the mayor mentioned, what do you expect? And, and we do have a lot of questions which we're trying to sift through. But if you could talk to us about your new Green Deal that you're talking about, how much does that include the energy grid, a zero carbon model, and what the mayor mentioned, the diversity that exists? Are you having a dialogue with the peoples of the Amazon in the project, in your project, we must understand that diversity is not only biodiversity, but socioeconomic. And we, yes, we do take that into consideration whenever we debate uh, development and also the payment for environmental. Uh, who are the recipients? We can't have these mechanisms that we're fighting for and many others. We can't have a vision that's only a tax vision that we're going to use this to try to collect revenues. Of course, there have to be revenues. There have to, we have to collect uh, resources and international resources precisely so that we can launch our Green Deal grounded on socio and biodiversity, dealing with four pillars. The first, an emergency element, which we have to mention. I believe in the second trimester, Brazil will confront grave difficulties once again on the environmental front. All the indicators are show that the situation will be very serious. So the first element is we must put an end to illegal deforestation. And then yes, economic, uh, green, green uh, economy, Green New Deal, sustainable projects, agricultural projects, green agricultural projects, and secretary, uh, the secretary mentioned training using the local intelligence, which is all over the Amazon region. And the fourth element is green infrastructure as opposed to the gray infrastructure. And Edge Milson made mention of this. In the past, they thought that to develop the, the, the Amazon was simply a question of creating a huge parking lot, putting up a bunch of buildings. That was the ultra conservative vision of great projects that resulted in the current disasters that we see now and often resulted in genocides, genocides of the indigenous populations. So internet today, the internet highways are as important as the the actual highways. In the past, there was this idea that we had to have highways going through the Amazon. So, so the vision of infrastructure is different. We, it's a very well thought out plan. We're working with teams from the nine states, uh, an interfederative approach, working also with the federal government, and often it advances little by little trying to tr to to find strength in unity with a regional approach to try to create a long range vision with correct policies and we don't we want to we don't want to have that vision of simply we want money we want money but yes we want money but for what why do we need the money that's an, for, an unfortunate brazilian tradition so that's why we want to go beyond that vision. We want to go beyond a, a tax or an opportunistic vision, which we repudiate. And have the details of this plan been released, the concrete actions and immediate actions that you plan to take? We will be releasing, a, a pre, we'll have a presentation on the 21st of June, we'll show all the technical work that we've done, uh, also our portfolio of projects that we've worked with with each state, and then we'll show the distribution of projects along those four pillars, 
that I mentioned. I believe that this will be a very solid base with all the detailing of the projects so that we can also recover the Amazon fund to see how it can be coordinated with other international projects and also look for Brazilian resources. There are Brazilian corporations, there's Brazilian funds to try to really change in, in a concrete way the lives of the people in the Amazon. If, if these things were in your hands, what would be the most urgent action that we would need to take? And what, in your view, is the most urgent action that needs to be taken in the area that you work in, Tatiana? I just wanted to add that we will also be recovering uh, the governor will be launching his on the 25th, which is a, on a Friday. We'll have a in, forum on investment science and bioinvestments. This forum, and what are, have we seen recently? There's a whole range of resources available, in quotation marks, to the states. And many investment mechanisms and many groups of investors who are interested in investing in the preservation and conservation of the economy. So last year, we began coordinating this investment and innovation forum with a few premises. First of all, there is a significant funds for investing in the Amazons, but it's not well coordinated and not a, a lot of communication between them. So when we began working in creating this forum, which was done by the task force of the conservation network for the Amazon, along with the consortium of governors, the nine state governments, we tried to envision the Amazon economy. So we wanted to define, we said we have three scales of bioeconomies and they are distributed territorially and often there's duplication. Well, the first scale is a traditional one. It's the one where in these networks of productive uh, networks, and I don't like to talk about productive chains, I don't like chains. When we speak about change, we're talking about an industries, and these aren't industries. We're thinking of networks of productive knowledge tied to indigenous people, the Quilombo groups, traditional people, Afro descendants that have existed over centuries. So it's not traditional notion of innovation. So we also have to be very careful, as the mayor said, to look at the social justice side to look at safeguards, to look at how to protect local knowledge and how to approach these populations, which often have had very little contact with modern society. So when we think of investing in bioeconomies on such a scale, that is a special world. The second question, which we call economic bioforests, I talk about the imperfect markets, so there's all this knowledge, but there's a lack of data. And we've worked on a, Flavio, Gino and I were on a panel. We spoke about the difficulty in managing all the actions, the economic actions, because often we don't know what the harvests are, what are the prices. So how can we work on a government level how can we create adequate public policies without this information? So these networks of productive networks are important because it might be the same product, but they might have different uh, labor practices, different uh, models in different states. So municipalities often are very large, but they're networks that often, uh, often are found among these different centers. The third type is the commodity bioeconomy with two 
pillars. One is cattle, soy, corn, which exists in the Amazon region. We can't simply ignore this. Quite the contrary, we need to think how can we bring those products within the dialogue in a more kind of collaborative model and not a combative model. So often there's conflict between these three elements and we don't need conflict. That's what we least need in Brazil. We need to think of investments that will accentuate the synergy between them. And the second has to do with the insertion of high technology and research in new products. We have the industrial uh, center of Manaus, which has existed for over 50 years. And we must remember that it's an industrial ecosystem that exists in the middle of the Amazon. So we have to take advantage of these industrial policies that already exist. And lastly, so that these three bioeconomic and investment scales work, we need to look at what our principles are. We have to be very clear what our principles and values are, mainly if we speak about public policies. So we have four principles for investments. First, conservation of biodiversity. Independent of the chain, if it doesn't have a commitment with biodiversity, it won't serve the economy. Second, to try to diminish socioeconomic inequalities. The governor spoke about it, so did the mayor. We have the lowest levels uh, of education, health, uh, statistics in the country for s centuries. So we have to review how we can improve those statistics. And once we deal with this, we will create a unique opportunity for development. And the Biden plan for us is a very important rhetoric for the Amazon, which is the economy of care of the most important infrastructure is human. So we have to look carefully at what the Biden plan is building and to try to bring that to our reality. The third principle is the importance of science and technology and innovation for development. And so we're not only talking about like, like cutting edge science. Yes, we need nanotechnology, but I also need a very concrete technology. So there's a whole range of necessities for science in the region. And lastly, we need a economy which will keep the forest standing. But if we only speak of a standing, uh, a standing uh, forest and don't talk about how to develop, then nobody will, will, will be able to live there. So we need to think of mechanisms. We need to learn from agribusiness. We need to learn about investing in forests. And in this forum, we'll bring examples of different bioeconomies and of these principles and discuss this range of investors from the phil individual philanthropists, family investors, international investors, and so forth. And we end our forum with showing that there is a concrete proposal for green recovery of the Amazon. You spoke of statistics and many different interesting elements, and that reminded me of our partner, Imazon, in, during our last edition. And one interesting thing that we saw is that there are products which the Amazon already exports nowadays, and it has a very sm small, minuscule share in the international market. Uh, the, the Brazil nut, the Brazil nut, which uh, in Brazil is called the Castanha do Pará, but it often comes from Bolivia and many other products. Here is the cover of our latest edition with the pirarucu fish, an example. There's also the derivatives of this fish, which has such an important uh, role in the world economy, but Uganda is the leader in that space. So there's a lack of statistics which ends up affecting this. So these industries exist, but often they can't be empowered with this lack of statistics. There's so many questions. Let's dig right in. 
This question, I think, is for all of you. Tatiana already answered part of it. Simone Ataíde is from the Florida International University. She's Brazilian. She's worked for over 20 years with Amazon Preservationists. What type of international partnership can contribute to the consortium and to your priorities of information, education? What are the priorities? So although it was a question toward the consortium, but I wanted to know, Mayor, what's your local vision of this? How can these uh, institutions affect or help the local governments? I participated in a debate three weeks ago where American senators and other officials, as a matter of fact, members of the U.S. Department of State participated. It was organized by Amazon Watch. And at this meeting, the objective was to show that President Biden had to be careful to accept President Bolsonaro's proposal, asking for investment resources for developing the Amazon. And we suggested, especially considering that Brazil is a federation with all its problems, but that there exist possibilities for ties with states and international institutions, even financial institutions from the world world uh, entities like the Inter-American Development Bank, which before didn't finance municipal projects. There was recently the, the, in the 90s, there was the earthquake in Ecuador, in Quito. And after that event, they started to financing through different mechanisms, individual projects, health projects. So when we speak of defending the Amazon, we have a governor like Governor Gino, so why give resources to a criminal minister of the environment who is being investigated by the federal police instead of giving it to a local uh, or state entity? So these international entities have to have this vision. Their uh, Sebastian Olho uh, was unjustly accused in the Switzerland of having assaulted a bank, and then after that, he was uh, found innocent. When I was a state congressman, and I proposed that a, 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 a senator would go there, I was told that the cantons in Switzerland were more interested in hearing the voice of a state senator than a federal senator. And that really impressed me, the importance of local regions in Switzerland. So here, we have to remember that we're also a federation. So we have to seek, and the, the state government seek the city of Belém to try to leverage projects, sustainable projects. That's of fundamental importance for these investors, even if these projects are just uh, one-shot uh, one deals. Uh, so, the idea is that we're drying ice. So, we're currently planting species to try to reforest areas of Belém and, and reforest the urban area. We have a 1.5 million people in the municipality of Belém. So, we need 480,000 trees. So, it, it's not impossible if each person plants three trees. So, but we need to produce enough uh, seedlings. So our project is to transform Belém into a true green metropolis in the Amazon, a real true green Amazon city. But now we don't have that ability because the type of modernization is incomplete, exclusive, and conservative. So last month, Cecilia, according to IMPE, the Brazilian Statistical Organization, 
we had 1,200 square kilometers that were deforested. So the government, the federal government has encouraged the invasion of indigenous lands, of preser areas of preservation. It's the minister of the environment and it's the president of the republic who is encouraging the invasion of these lands. And this has repercussion for all of humanity. 1,200 square kilometers, what does that mean if we deforest that? It means that the population of Belém is in 1,500, uh, the, the entire population of Belém could fit in this space. Two Porto Alegres and a half, they also have 1.5 million, could fit in this area. So it's frightening that our country in one year can lose so many square kilometers of forest and that this is seen as normal by the world and that Brazilian institutions are often trying to resist uh, in a piecemeal fashion. This should be seen as a crime against humanity. We need international solidarity on this front. So how can a poor city like Belém move forward? Of the 10 million people who were in extreme poverty in Brazil, over a million of them were in the state of Pará, which is one of the richest states in terms of mineral and forest resources. So we had more revenues and commodities than the state of Sao Paulo. The federal constitution, unfortunately, says the, the Everything that we export leaves zero taxes, zero export taxes. That's what the federal constitution tells us. So this standard of development is contrary to what Brazil needs. It's contrary to the, what, the, what the region needs, contrary to all models of sustainability. So we have to change these models. We need uh, new thinking and to try to really remove Brazil from this uh, model of ec ecological destruction. So it, we have to resist and the solidarity of international institutions is of fundamental importance. Please, please seek us out. We want to plant 50,000 new trees, 10,000 new trees. We want new schools, new schools in Belém, new schools in the interior of Maranhão or the state of Amazonas. We want photovoltaic uh, cells. With a few reais, I can abandon polluting energy and have alternative energy. So what justifies the fact that 30% of Germany's energy nowadays is solar, while we here, Belém, which is only on the equator, only 12 minutes difference between nighttime and daytime, and we don't have that high level of solar energy. So we need the state, we need the federal government to invest. 35 billion was invested in the Belamonte hydroelectric plant, repeating the problems of the military dictatorship where we could transform Brazil's electricity grid with solar energy. So these are lost opportunities. So the local governments need solidarity from the international community and it's possible. With the solidarity, we can do it. You answered uh, another question, which was André Bueiro's question from the Consulate General here in New York. He asked what technologies could be disseminated abroad, and he answered, solar, there's so much stuff to do. So, Governor, we heard a bit about this collaboration with academia, with international universities. What research 
would be important. What collaborative projects can be done, which can be done with the help of these international institutions? How can they help? How can they contribute? We have a native pharmacy project involving Imbrapa and their collection of pharmaceutical products, the universities, and we've already produced six medications. So how can the governors or the local leaders empower these efforts? There are local research and know-how that's based on this tremendous uh, biodiversity with great pharmaceutical potential. So this project looks for more local investment. So we think there can be a collaboration between our entities to try to empower these projects even more. Governor, how do you see this, uh, these opportunities for collaboration? As I mentioned, Cecilia, one of the axes of our Green Deal is science and technology. And I think that when Tatiana spoke of the several layers of the bioeconomy, she showed us an interesting route for our colleagues in academia and in the universities. I think it's important to have a dialogue with research entities in the Amazon. It's one of our points in our plan to try to dialogue with these research entities to contribute to the local knowledge network in the different state, federal, and local institutions. And also environmental education is important, uh, remote learning. We have our Maranhão uh, Environmental School. We selected 2,000 uh, young people who received scholarships to create a network of young people who will be apprentices. So these projects are very welcome using uh, internet technology, keeping in mind the huge dimension of the Amazon. So international universities can approach us. So we have these environmental schools. Other projects like this exist, environmental projects. So it's as if we had two agendas now on the ground. As you mentioned, where the, where the rubber hits the road, this American phrase. Often there's a distancing, there's a Paris Accord, but it has to be debated in Santarém. So as long as the, uh, uh, the, the Paris Accord is only discussed in Glasgow, that won't have the repercussions in the Amazon region that we need. So this project of uh, trying to divulge scientific knowledge tries to do this. And these two agendas need to work hand in hand. Our, uh, in other words, the large international commitments with the agenda of the local populations in the Amazon region. Collaboration is key. There are many of those researchers, which you mentioned, with Tatiana mentioned, there's a lot of local research. Then there's another delicate question. There's a lot of patents that don't remain in the region. So how can we encourage the, this, that this development continue and a lot of this uh, these innovations stay in the region. So we're launching another program that begins in the Amazon state, but will then be spread to other states, which is a network of micro, uh, it, it deals with the network underneath the forest and to try to understand the intelligence among the forest and the trees and how they communicate. So we're trying to register, we're registering researchers, we're approaching international investigators to try to, researchers to investigate, to, uh, 
to research this, the communication among the trees and plants in the forest. But it's based on these four principles I mentioned before. Otherwise, it won't work. We're also registering the private sector in this initiative. The idea of this network is we will register. So if we talk about the Brazil nut, we, so we try to attract everyone who works on that. And so we'll have a data bank, all the private sector that works with this commodity. So if you want to research, you need to tie to, to become part of this data bank because the Amazon is not for beginners. I've worked for many years in the Amazon region, and I can tell you, you can't just come here and write this beautiful article. It might be a beautiful article, but you really have to do the legwork. There is a whole dynamic, and there is a rhythm to things here, which I think is very neat about the Amazon. And I hope we can develop this. There's a rhythm, which is our own rhythm, and I think the RISA network helps with that. So we need to resolve education, which was mentioned earlier. I know people are tired of talking about the need for education, but it's real. The, uh, we have the worst educational ranking in the country. There have been great efforts to get children inside the school, but this has not borne the fruit. So we still have to invest in high school education. We need to invest heavily. As the Secretary of Science, Innovation and Technology, I have tried to strengthen high school and primary education because that's the base of everything in my understanding. That's very important. and. This goes back to the economy of care and the service economy and the health economy, which are all essential in the Amazon. I could talk to you all day. We have so many questions, but we are almost at the end. There's so many questions. Some I might forward to you, to your staff. Kim has, has a program called Afro-Latina Travels. She asks about ecotourism, sustainable tourism in the region, specifically about these plans to combat racism among the Afro-descendants. Uh, we had the pleasure of uh, speaking to someone from your committee, but uh, I will forward her information to you, uh, but so our time, unfortunately, is ending, but uh, I will try to connect you. There's so many questions, so many people concerned about the activities of the Brazilian federal government. We know this is a very complex issue that we can't resolve or describe in the short time we have together. There's so many questions about uh, how can the private sector contribute? Governor, let, I'll pose that question to you. How can the private sector and the international community contribute? First of all, as was said by Tatiana, and I reiterate, it's to try to know the concrete realities so that we can have a stronger dialogue and strengthen our cooperation. Oftentimes, there's this denialist uh, vision, which is rooted in this notion of national sovereignty, as if there was a contradiction between sovereignty and international cooperation. Quite the contrary. So cooperation presupposes sovereignty. So I think that wider cooperation with the private sector can happen, as the mayor said, creating a diversity of actors. I know a lot of times corporations and, and even diplomatic course uh, speak of this, but it's essential. We know how 
obnoxious the activities of the current federal government is. But I think these actions can transcend this. If we understand how Brazilian federal, federalism can, can overcome this, can transpose these problems, creating links between uh, local and state governments. So the consortium has created its own financial mechanism. So we have our green recovery plan tied to a financing mechanism with total transparency, uh, transparency so that there is this possibility for the private sector to approach the states. And of course, there are municipal mechanisms to do the same. So this doesn't need to only be injection of financial resources, but also of know-how and technology and so forth. So this regional plan makes this possible. So have a diversity of interlocutors and to approach the local reality in the Amazons, approach the people of the Amazons. With in mind, keeping in mind the, the socio and environmental diversity of the region. We need economic incentives, not only enforcement. And a standing forest shouldn't be empty rhetoric. And it shouldn't be a, a worn out trope because it, 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 and it will be if it doesn't have concrete results for the local population. That's why this cooperation, looking at the people on the ground, trying to approach them and improve their lives, that's of vital importance. Thank you so much. And I want to uh, praise the mayor and the secretary. I have great respect for them and you, Cecilia, for all of your work which is great importance, and all the people who are listening to us on the internet. Thank you, Governor, Mayor Rodriguez, Tatiana Shore, the Secretary of Science, Technology, and Innovation for the State of Amazonas. You all have a lot of work ahead. Thank you so much for your participation. Thank you so much for the work you do. All of us need a standing Amazon and the people in the Amazon need to feel pride and ownership in the region and to have great opportunities to live with the standing forest. So we need capital, patient capital is the expression you use. We need capital with patience. Thank you so much. There were so many questions which shows great interest. It was a great pleasure. Thank you so much.